Hello, welcome to another episode of This, That, and the Other, and this was another recommended subject. It was about a situation where, on July 9, 1960, seven-year-old Roger Woodward went over the falls wearing a little more than a life jacket. It would, come, it would become known as the Miracle of Niagara. On July 9, 1960, Roger and his 17-year-old sister, Deanna, Deanne, joined a family friend, Jim Honeycutt, 40, on his 14-foot aluminum boat equipped with an outboard motor for a trip down the Niagara River high above the falls. The Woodward family had moved to the area a few months earlier and they thought an outing to the falls would be a nice way to celebrate Deanne's birthday. None of them would soon be, none of them knew they would soon be experiencing the mighty Niagara from a terrifying vantage point. Honeycutt piled his boat past the Ontario Hydro Control Dam only a mile from the brink of the Horseshoe Fall on the Canadian side. It provides a more even flow of water over the falls. Not many boats venture past this point where the friendly river turns turbulent, but Honeycutt underestimated the river's strength and the danger came with it. Soon the boat's passengers could see Goat Island dividing the river into two sets of rapids, one going over the American Falls, the other the Horseshoe Falls. In the distance, the three could see the spray caused by massive amounts of water falling over the falls and crashing into the river below. Not realizing the danger, Honeycutt desperately, now realizing the danger, Honeycutt desperately tried to turn the boat around and head for Goat Island, which extends at the very edge of the American and Horseshoe Falls, but it was too late. The boat was in the rapids now, being tossed around help helplessly. There were two orange life jackets of the boat. Roger was already wearing his, and Deanne struggled to fasten hers. Water pounded over the boat, rushing to over the sides, soon it capsized, and the passengers were soon tossed in the swirling water. Deanna could only make out her brother's orange life jacket bobbing further from Goat Island toward the Horseshoe Falls. The girl swam furiously, trying to reach the edge of Goat Island. The crowd had gathered, looking in disbelief. Suddenly, a man rushed to the railing. John Hayes, a truck driver and auxiliary policeman from New Jer Union, New Jersey, climbing over the guardrail, extended one arm as far as he could while grasping the rail while the other, but the girl was out of reach. Refusing to give up, Hayes ran ahead on a 18-inch ledge a few inches over the water. Kick hard, he pleaded, anchoring one foot above the bottom rail. He again st stretched his arm, Deanne's fingers clasped his thumb, and Hayes was able to stop her just feet from the brink of the falls, but he couldn't pull her to the, out of the violent current. Help came from another hero, John Quattrochi of Pinch Grove, New Jersey, who climbed over the railing, grabbed her other hand, and helped Pull safe, Hayes to safely, safety. Meanwhile, her brother and Honeycutt were still in the fight for their lives. When they were first pitched into the water, the boy was holding on to Honeycutt, but turned the water rips them apart. The rapids carried the two away from Goat Island and close to the center of Horseshoe Falls, but the shot over the brink in the mist below. Faced with Roger that day, the boy could have been hurled hundreds of rocks jutting to the water surface, but because of his wearing a life jacket, because of his 55-pound frame, Roger was rode the crest of the falls and shot beyond the pounding water. Honey cut heavier in weight, not wearing a life jacket, dropped straight down and was dead within seconds, and the current sent his body deep into the 200-foot well. Roger was alive but not out of danger, bobbing the water. He could not make out the outline. He could make the outline of the boat through the heavy mist, the may of the mist, taking tourists close to the base of the Horseshoe Falls. Captain Clifford Keach was about to turn his craft away from the falls when he spotted the orange jacket. He moved the boat, maneuvered the boat to pick up the boy. As he drifted past, the boat's crew flew a life preserver in Roger's direction. Once, then twice, on a third attempt, Roger was able to grab him and was pulled to safely. safety. He was lifted out of the water and placed on the jet the deck to the amazement of the boat's passengers, many of whom didn't realize the boy had come from over the fall. So this boy survived the fall with not more than much of a scratch. And... The family moved moved out of Niagara in 1962. Roger now resides in Alabama, and his sister Deanne went decades barely speaking about the brush with death. Years later, when Roger was in high school, a reporter managed to track him down and encourage the boy to share his story. The people I went to school with didn't know anything about it, said Roger, though he kept a low profile for years. His three sons were more willing to share their dad's remarkable story as a Niagara survivor. As Roger would put it, it was a pretty good show-and-tell piece in school. So that's basically what I was able to get on the boy that fell 
over Niagara Falls and survived miraculously. Like, subscribe, share. As always, thanks for watching.